Uh, my name is Joan Farrell, and uh, my husband and I have a, a small company called Farrell Outdoors. It's a, more educational presentations associated with the, the, the natural world. So, but we do get out there and actually go to, to the trails. We haven't seen prehistoric animals, but uh, we also enjoy uh, all the aspects of uh, the outdoors. And so on with prehistoric animals living in modern times. I actually was in a grocery store just a few days ago and there was a child about 11 years old that was telling jokes to his mom in front of me. And one was, what do you get when you cross a pig and a dinosaur? And mom goes, what? He goes, a Jurassic pork. And the next was, what kind of explosions do dinosaurs like? Dynamite. So on with the presentation. Every modern day animal has a prehistoric an ancestor. Not all prehistoric animals have modern day relatives though. Many animals living in Florida with prehistoric ancestors look similar or exactly like their ancestors that date back millions of years. To help understand why Florida has the animals it does, let's explore Florida's evolution. Imagine standing in your backyard and everywhere around you, you are just covered with water, but the water is crystal clear and there's pristine coral reefs. There's all kinds of fish swimming around you and it is just absolutely amazing. So that's what the waters look like at that time. Now let's rewind a hundred million years ago. Imagine you're taking a giant step back further in time. Florida began forming 530 million years ago along Northwest Africa as part of the supercontinent known as Gondwana. According to plate tectonics, the theory of why land masses are why they are today, Gondwana was created by the continental collisions about 1 billion to 542 million years ago. Gondwana then collided with North America, Europe, and Siberia to form the supercontinent of Pangaea. Now, some of these collisions were very violent. They caused earthquakes and tidal waves which is one of the reasons why the continent started breaking apart. When Pangaea started to break apart, Florida slipped below the waves to become part of North America's continental shelf. It was covered by a few feet to 100 feet of water. What's interesting about this graphic I found was all the national parks associated with the United States at one time were underneath water. So if you take a look at this uh, graphic here, you'll see that even Padre Island was underneath water. Over a span of 11 million years and four ice ages, Florida has submerged and emerged from the ocean four times due to glaciers melting at the end of each ice age. Before the last ice age completely melted, some of the Florida emerged permanently, allowing animals to walk into Florida over the ice. Some of these animals were the imperial mammoths and the saber-toothed tigers, and they walked into Florida 35 million years ago. Now keep in mind that the T-Rex and giant dinosaurs had gone extinct 65 million years ago, explaining why no fossils of the big guys are found in Florida at all. Florida continued to emerge from the ocean from the buildup of erosion from the Appalachian Mountains sandstone moving south during and after every single ice age. The sand settled on the top of thousands of years of fossilized seashells 
animal skeletons and coral. This base layer is called limestone, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. If you had the opportunity to walk the Appalachian Trail in Pennsylvania or any of the northern states, you'll still see open fields of Tuscarora sandstone rock. In between the rocks lay piles of sand eroded from the rocks. From experience, the rocks are jagged and difficult to walk on. This location is called the River of Walks just outside uh, Kempton, Pennsylvania. And as far as the, the rocks, when you do actually see them, they're kind of porous, they're jagged, and there is sand in between each one of the rocks. So over millions of years, those sand particles that you see in between the rocks have migrated to Florida. The first dry areas that state emerged in Florida are the sand ridges. This is where you find some of the oldest land dwelling animals. For instance, snakes. Fossils date to 143 million and 167 million years ago. Of course, that's not in Florida, but that would be in, in other parts of what used to be Pangaea. And you can tell by the skeletal fossil here that snakes really have not changed much at all as they progress through history here. The gopher tortoise. One of the Eastern Indigo snakes heroes is the gopher tortoise, a keystone species, and it's offering its burrow to over 350 species of animals during its lifetime. They found fossils dating back 700,000 years ago, as far as the gopher tortoise. It's believed that the tortoises came before the sea turtles. And the sea turtles, fossils of the sea turtles found in Florida dated to 100 million years ago. The ocean dwelling animals have the oldest dated fossils because they survived catastrophic events because they were able to weather them out in the ocean. Five sea turtles visit the water surrounding Florida, the loggerhead, leatherback, the green, Kemp's Ridley, and the hawksbill. All visit the Florida shores, but only the loggerhead, green, and leatherback nests on Florida shores. You can see by the fossil also that the sea turtle hasn't changed much over millions of years. The shark, believe it or not, the shark comes from a group of bony fishes called. Acanthodians. Now they believe they came from these species because the skin is very familiar to, or it looks and feels, they felt as though it felt like uh, the current day shark. Also the rows of teeth and uh, the way the tail moved, it would go back and forth instead of up and down. Three hundred and fifty million years ago, it's known as golden sharks, and that was a big extinct extinction is, event. It was a catastrophic occurrence that they believe was caused by um, something hitting the Earth with, like, an asteroid with such severity that it threw the Earth off balance and started catastrophic events, which warmed the water and killed off 75% of the species that were living on the earth. The ones that, were that could withstand the warmth in the ocean are the ones that survived. And the sharks that did survive, they evolved into the modern day shark. Now, the, the hammerhead shark was the last to evolve with fossils dating to 45 million years ago.
the horseshoe crab. So this is dating back 45 million years ago. It has not changed its body style at all. It still has all the same um, skeletal aspects of it, the hard shell, the tail, and also the blue blood. Unfortunately, these guys are on the endangered list because of their blue blood. Their blue blood is copper based. So it does, they do bleed yellow, but then uh, red, but then it, then it turns blue. What the blue blood does is when it finds bacteria, it becomes all stringy and wraps itself around the bacteria. So science has been using the blue blood to help with keeping things sanitary without bacterial infection in it. And that the way they were finding that was with the blue blood. Just in 2018, a scientist, uh, husband and wife that live in Singapore just created a synthetic blue blood. So we're hoping that this is going to bring a comeback to these such delicate creatures. They don't seem like they're delicate, but because of the way that they were over farmed and once the blood was taken from them, unfortunately, um, they would decease. That some were let go, but then they didn't live very long. Now you have the small tooth sawfish. And this dates back to 65 million years ago. It is very similar to the shark. And because it had mostly cartilage, the only fossil that they could really find were the swords and their teeth. Their teeth would fall out on a regular basis and they would grow back. So the, the saw and the, the saw actually was the only part that they could find fossilized. Now you have the alligator. You have fossils were found in 32 Florida counties dating to 2 million years ago, which makes sense because if Florida didn't emerge out of the ocean in 2, 2 million years ago, then the alligator wouldn't have been able to survive until that period of time. Their body and ways of hunting and eating have not changed for literally millions of years. Their body armor has bony plates called scoots. On its back, the scoots absorb heat to warm the reptile. And the fossils show those bony plates also. So the structure of the alligator hasn't changed too much. The size of it has changed. Some of them were originally enormous and uh, just adaptation has changed them to um, the average is anywhere from eight to 12 feet now. I have the Sandhill Crane. Cornell Lab of Ornithology states that the Sandhill Crane fossils dated to be 2.5 million years and they were found in the Maccas Fault Shell Pit that's near Sarasota, Florida. The sandhill cranes continue to nest on their ground just like their ancient ancestors did. Now the oldest known bird, which is extinct now, was, is called an Arca Protocus. It's a crow-sized bird. It's 150 million years old. There are many theories as to how the bird evolved from the, the dinosaur. And I'll share a link, which you can also get right off of this particular slide that tells you more about this incredible bird and how it's, they, they think that dinosaurs shrank to become birds. So there's all kinds of theories associated with that. Now you got the roach. The, the roach has fossils dated back to 99 million years ago. This creature body structure has not changed. Now, how do cockroaches survive mass extinction? 
they were on the land, if they weren't water-based. So how in the world did they do that? Their bodies are very flat. If you ever crushed one, <laughs> they do crunch. And also they can squeeze into one sixteenth of an inch. Now looking at, this is just one inch on a ruler. So one six, next time you look at a ruler, look at one sixteenth, and you can see how much they squeeze in there. And there's four common co cockroaches in Central Florida. They're the German cockroach, Asian, the palmetto bug or the American cockroach, and then the smoky brown cockroach. On to a more favorable animal. You now have this, the sirenians, and these are the manatees. There's fossils that were found in eight counties in the state of Florida. And the West Indian mount, uh, manatee is found in Florida waters. They will be swimming in the springs again in, in, in a few months. It'll uh, probably be December, January. But one that sticks out is the stellar sea cow. The stellar sea cow was discovered in 1741 by a gentleman by the name of George W. Stiller in the North Pacific. It reached a length of 30 feet and weighed about 22,000 pounds. You can see the gentleman who found bones of it. So you can see how big the rib cage was compared to the gentleman that's there. In just 30 years after it was discovered, it became extinct in 1768. And there's a couple theories. It was overhunting. Then what happened was uh, there was a large population of otters that came into that region. They multiplied fairly quickly and otters like oysters. Oysters clean the water. So they consumed a huge amount of oysters. So there was nothing there to help purify the water. So there was also a bacterial aspect of it that impacted stellar sea cow too, plus with the overeating. Now, if you would like to find out more about hunting for fossils, for just $5, you can get a permit through the Florida Museum and the application can be found at this URL. And learning more about animals surrounding you can be easy as taking a short hike. There's normally more than just meets the eye as those with those who like to go birding for our birders. You have wonderful abilities to hear the bird and to see the bird, but you need to be super observant. So you would be perfect for also finding a variety of animals that might be along the trails, waterways and preserves in the parks. And I hope you thoroughly enjoy them. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation.